forecast first on Color 10 News. It has been a gloomy Valentine's Day across most of the area, and actually further south, it's been downright wet and cold all day long. In fact, we're still finding uh, light to moderate rain uh, near and south of the state line, impacting areas like Branson, Harrison, uh, Berryville, east of the Mountain Home area. That's also where temperatures are a lot colder, around 40 there. 46 here in Springfield. We managed to make it into the 50s to our north up near Highway 54. Our evening forecast locally in Springfield looks quiet. In fact, skies should clear out around midnight tonight with temperatures dropping into the low 40s. Looks like morning lows are around freezing and sunshine. It makes a return tomorrow. Warm spring like temperatures make a return later this week. Details coming up. Color 10 News at 6 starts now. You're watching Color 10 News at 6 in high definition. Hundreds gathered on the Drew University campus this afternoon to remember the life of a student and swimmer who passed away two weeks ago. Good evening once again to you. I'm David Oliver. Thanks for joining us. I'm Jennifer Kilman. 22-year-old Wen Zhu, who went by her American name Ariel, had a medical emergency during practice on February the 2nd. Color 10's Jennifer Abreu was at the memorial this afternoon, and she has more for us. Jennifer. Teammates, classmates, staff, her close friends, and even those who didn't know her well came together today to celebrate Ariel's life. Ariel's family flew in from China for the memorial today. Her father spoke to the crowd in Chinese, thanking the jury community for welcoming their daughter. Staff and team members also took the stage, and those who knew her best say they will remember her by her work ethic and how she swam for her team. But the words most used to describe her today were joy and loyalty. She was amazing. I mean, everyone you talk to is going to say she's amazing, but she was such a hard worker. She was always so happy. She always had a smile on her face during practice. It was, it was a real joy to share a lane with her. A memorial for Ariel is also set up just outside the breach pool on the Drury campus. All right, Jennifer, tonight, thank you. Around the Ozarks now, new numbers show emergency calls from hotels and motels in Branson are declining. It's believed to be the result of a new ordinance aimed at making the city safer. Our Grant Sloan joins us now live from Branson tonight with this story. Grant. Well, Jennifer, we're talking about the new tier system that each hotel is placed in. Now, these tiers are based on the number of emergency calls that a hotel makes to, say, the police department. And based on that number and the number of tiers that they're in the tier that they're in, they then have to implement certain safety regulations. And so far, every hotel is in the best category. The place was a mess when I got here. Um, the manager wanted us to come over here because she knew we could take care of the place and clean it up, and that's just what we've done. Billy Brock has been the manager at the Branson Plaza for about five months, and so far, she hasn't had to call the police. I am picky about who I let in. Um, if I don't think you're suitable here, I don't let you stay. As the city prepared to roll out its new hotel ordinance, it began working with hotel managers to try and set them up for success. Tier 1 comes with the fewest restrictions and is considered the best tier. And so far, that's where every hotel is. Having said that, it was for a six-month period. Uh, we did have a couple of properties that were somewhat close to be get, being a tier two property. As hotels move into tiers two and three, they're required to implement additional safety regulations like new lighting, parking passes, and 24-hour desk presence. Well, in the past, some property owners expressed concerns that managers would just stop calling police. But Police Chief Stan Dobbins believes the drop in calls is a sign the new system is working. It is true that we are receiving fewer calls, but we found that there, we're still receiving calls on the serious crimes. We are receiving fewer calls on minor disturbances or civil matters. The city has helped educate owners and managers on what their legal rights are when it comes to resolving and preventing such disturbances. Dobbin says in doing so, it's helped bring to light issues that some property owners weren't aware of. It's been a wonderful teamwork effort between the property owners and the police department, and we uh, look forward to continuing that success. Now, again, these stats are from a six-month trial period. Going forward, the hotels will be reassessed every year. Reporting live in Branson, Grant Sloan, Color 10 News, Ozarks First. Tonight, plans for a new jail in Webster County have hit a snag, and now county leaders are left searching for a way to overcome it. Color 10's Callie Rainey is here with this report on our news tonight. Callie? David, for the past two years, county officials have been excited. A new, much-needed jail in the works. But when recent bids came back almost 20% higher than what was planned, emotions have changed. We're continually overpopulated, which leads to violence, uh, contagious diseases, and, and illnesses are a 
ever present. Sheriff Roy Cole says the Webster County Jail is almost double its 32 inmate daily capacity, which is even more than its original capacity. I think it originally held like eight people. Well, we have taken that same structure and expanded it, uh, not with square footage, but redesigned the layout over and over and over throughout the years to try to hold more inmates. In 2014, voters passed a quarter cent law enforcement sales tax increase to build a new jail. It will have, I believe, 136 beds per se for, uh, in, in pods and beds, and then there'll be 14 uh, beds <coughs> for uh, work release. But now, bids are coming back almost 20% higher than what the county budgeted for. The ultimate goal. What we're shooting for is to make sure that the product we designed is eventually what we get. Right now, we're determined whether it's going to be a time frame delay or whether it's going to be uh, mortgaged out in a certain way, whether we have to find certain interest rates. Presiding Commissioner Paul Ipock says they're working alongside the architect. They're bringing new plans, new thoughts to us. They say scaling back isn't an option. Today, we might not need the 150. Uh, but when this when this jail was built, they might not have needed the aid either. You have to plan for the future. And with several surrounding counties in the same boat having to send inmates elsewhere, officials are looking at housing as a form of income in the future. We're just trying to look at alternative methods to bring in more money, whether it be from open bed revenue, uh, some type of federal grant. Uh, are, are there are there monies that we can save that will allow us to get more with less? Both Cole and IPOC say asking taxpayers for more money isn't an option. They hope to have more answers to the jail issue in the near future. All right, Callie, tonight, thank you. If you'd like this weekend's weather, and you're going to love what we have in store for the rest of the week. Jamie's in next to tell us all about it. You're watching Color 10 News with David Oliver, Jennifer Kilman, weather with Chief Meteorologist Jamie Warner, and sports with Dan Lucy. This is Color 10 News at 6. Now weather with Color 10 News Chief Meteorologist Jamie Warner. Kind of an ugly day out there, but we got some much needed rainfall across most of the area overnight last night and throughout the day today, too, uh, in area south of Highway 60. There's a look at radar right now. It's looked that way just about all day long. A, a persistent light to moderate rain uh, from the Rogers area east into West Plains. And right now on radar, we're seeing something called bright banding, which is basically radar picking up wet snowflakes mixing in with the rain above the surface. Uh, these uh, snowflakes aren't reaching the ground just yet, uh, but it is a possibility that some of that could maybe mix into some of the uh, higher elevations down to our south. Uh, you can see that little bright band right in there indicating where we have that mixture of wet snow and rain. Again, this is upstairs. Temperatures right now a little bit too warm, I think, for those snowflakes to reach the surface. What I like to see for that to happen is temperatures to drop closer to around 35, 36 degrees, and right now we're not finding that. But we are finding certainly a cold Cold rain across northwest Arkansas and to us southwestern most Missouri, where temperatures have been hovering around 40 degrees throughout the day today. 39 right now, in fact, in Branson. But you don't have to head too far north, uh, up 65 to get into some warmer readings and drier conditions. We found that today in Springfield with afternoon highs in the upper 40s and areas to the north. The clouds actually thinned out enough for temperatures to warm into the low to mid 50s. Here's our storm. It is making headway now across the deep south. The upper level low is centered right about in there. And oftentimes when you have these more developed systems, uh, you're, you're going to find a band of heavier rain which tries to set up on the uh, north and northwest side of the storm. And that's exactly what we're finding right now from eastern Oklahoma across northern Arkansas into southernmost Missouri. And, and I think heading through the evening hours, we're not going to find much change in the positioning of where that rain is. So if you're getting rain right now, you're probably going to continue to find rain through most of the evening. But after midnight, I do expect the rain to gradually make its way out of the area and clouds will follow suit. So let's take a look at our hour by hour forecast. By midnight tonight, you can see how the rain begins to start pulling away from northern Arkansas. Skies should be clearing out here along I-44 toward midnight tonight. And then after midnight, skies will clear out from northwest to southeast across the remainder of the area. Now, that may set up uh, the potential for some overnight fog, especially in areas that have gotten some rain uh, either last night or throughout the day today. Uh, so fog possible along with some low cloudiness. That should quickly give way, though, to sunny skies Wednesday morning. And Wednesday afternoon looks beautiful, albeit a little cool, with afternoon highs up near 50. 
50 degrees. Still nice to see that sun return after a cloudy and cold day today. As far as Wednesday night is concerned, more clear skies and we'll hold on to clear conditions right through Thursday. And what's interesting with Thursday is we'll see a big wind shift. Uh, tomorrow, winds will be out of the northwest. To, uh, by Thursday, we'll find winds out of the southwest. That's a warm wind direction and it will indeed be pushing in warmer air. We'll see a big spike in temperatures going from highs near 50 on Wednesday to highs in the mid 60s on Thursday. And that warm up will continue through the weekend with highs up near 70 Friday, Saturday, in the 70s on Sunday into Monday. Uh, looks like we'll see a, a warm pattern, in fact, through most of next week. About 31 for an overnight low tonight in Springfield with highs tomorrow up near 50 degrees. Check out the readings for the rest of the week and through this upcoming weekend. Uh, that's right, uh, not feeling like February, more like maybe late March. Uh, in fact, by Sunday, we're looking at highs in the low to mid 70s. We'll see a chance for showers slip into the area sometime late Monday into Tuesday. Just unreal. Jamie, and our viewers club number. Viewers club number for tonight is 132967 and our jackpot $600. All right, Jamie, thanks. We had to turn away over a million pounds of food. Up next, we're going to tell you how a couple of local food pantries are addressing the problem of having too much food. There's a common dilemma facing two of Springfield's food banks. Too much food is coming in and there's not enough space to store it. Color 10's Bria Douglas is live tonight to tell us what they're going to be doing to help try to combat the issue, Bria. Exactly right. Ozark's Food Harvest and Least of These Food Pantry reveal that they are simply outgrowing their facilities and hope to expand their operations by the end of the year. Excess food is a refreshing problem to have if you're a food bank, but for Ozark's Food Harvest, that means millions of dollars are needed for the food bank to fix the problem of not having enough room in the distribution center to store it. Ozark's Food Harvest CEO Bart Brown announced what the plans are to solve the issue. We're going to have to double what we do now if we're really going to, to meet the need that's in the Ozarks. So the, end, the Ending Hunger, Building Hope campaign will add an addition um, to this current facility. The new facility will be an additional 56,000 square feet attached to their current warehouse where they'll be able to accept and distribute more food and double in the 16 million meals they serve annually. We have more opportunity to distribute more product, but last year we had to turn away over a million pounds of food because we did not have the facilities or the right kind of space. Another food bank dealing with the lack of space is the least of these food pantry. It is seeking $1.6 million for the pantry's more than food project facility, a project designed to increase capacity in order to store and distribute food and clothing. Development director Christy Carter explains what a recent Maybe Foundation challenge grant given to the campaign will mean for the organization. Oh, it's huge. Um, our total operating budget is just over half a million dollars. So this capital campaign is huge and it's necessary for us to get to a permanent home that we can operate more efficiently. Ozark's Food Harvest also received a grant from the Maybe Foundation and is asking the public to help raise $900,000 by December 1st to go toward the $4 million distribution center expansion. Ozark's Food Harvest hopes to have the groundbreaking for the new facility by next year. Reporting live in Springfield, Bria Douglas, Color 10 News, Ozark's First. All right, Bria, thanks for the update. Dan Lucy is coming up in sports. The Cards and Royals open spring training plus. When you're told yourself, it didn't really sink in and still won't probably sink in until opening day, maybe in St. Louis. A Springfield Cardinal finally makes it to the big leagues. That's next in sports. Now, Color 10 Sports with Dan Lucy. Pitchers and catchers reported the spring training camps today for both the Kansas City Royals and St. Louis Cardinals. In Cardinals camp, day one was not even complete when the Cardinals received bad news. Right-handed pitcher Alex Reyes has a partial tear of his ulnar collateral ligament in his pitching elbow. He will get a second opinion, but most likely he's looking at Tommy John surgery and will miss this season. Reyes made his big league debut last August. He was 4-1 with a 1.57 ERA and five starts. Reyes made eight starts at AA Springfield in 2015. Maurice Drummond has more from Cards Camp in Jupiter on opening day. The grounds crew here at Roger Dean Stadium was busy at work yesterday, getting the fields ready for this morning's first workout for Cards pitchers and catchers. 
Redbird arms like Matt Bowman were getting limbered up for what the team hopes will be a return to the postseason. Veteran right-hander Adam Wainwright is also anticipating a return to form after experiencing the most frustrating season of his 11-year career. From a team standpoint, not making the playoffs last year, it hurt. And, and to know from a personal standpoint that we missed by one, one game and I'd you know, if I win two more games, we go to the postseason. Last season's 4.62 ERA and his 22 home runs allowed were both career worse for Wainwright after losing his 2015 season to an Achilles injury. I'm back to where I was. The Cardinals will celebrate their 20th season here at Roger Dean Stadium. This will also be the first time since 2013 that the Cardinals are coming off not winning the Central Division title. In Jupiter, Florida, Maurice Drummond, News 4 Sports. There are a number of former Springfield Cardinals on the St. Louis Cardinals roster, but the big league roster also boasts of two former Springfield managers. Chris Maloney is the third base coach, and this season Mike Schilt has been called up to the big leagues. St. Louis general manager John Mazalot contacted Schilt in the offseason, offered him the job of being the Cardinals quality control coach. That puts him in uniform in the Cardinals dugout this entire season. Schilt managed the Springfield Cardinals from 2012 to 2014, and he led Springfield to a test. Texas League Championship in 2012. Blessing I've had of many of being the job I've had is tell a guy that he's going to big leagues, either going back or clearly the first timers or the, or the special ones. And um, when you're told yourself, it didn't really sink in and still won't probably sink in until opening day, maybe in St. Louis. Well, the Springfield experience was probably the most growth that took place for me. But my opportunity there was tremendous. The people were fantastic. We had a really good teams, which, which helped as well. Congratulations to him. The Missouri State Bears will continue their current homestand when they host Illinois State tomorrow night at the Q. In our Bear Nation report, the game will tip off at 8 o'clock tomorrow night because it's on Fox Sports Midwest. And Paul Lust Bears will be trying to snap a three-game losing streak against a Redbird team that's 13-1 and one in Valley play. The Bears squandered a 10-point lead Sunday afternoon in their three-point loss in Northern Iowa. Despite the losing skid, Les says the players have their heads up and will be ready to go tomorrow night. They've been great. They're, they're practicing hard. They played extremely hard the other night. Uh, we just weren't able to get it done. And uh, uh, at this time of the year, you need to continue to play hard, but you also need to produce, and, and guys have to produce. Yeah, they only have uh, five games left in the regular season before the end of the year. Okay, Dan, mm -hmm. thanks so much. More on your forecast is up next. Enjoying these temperatures this week. Maybe not today not or tomorrow, today. but... Today, today was ugly. If you guys ever remember some of the SpongeBob episodes from early on, we had a bad case of the ugly today. Uh, clouds. Uh, even a lot of wet and wet. See, you guys don't remember. You didn't. No. I, my daughter was was right there at that age when it was. You know. You know. SpongeBob was at its my prime, son and watched, I would watch. But I didn't watch it. Well, you missed out, David Oliver. Maybe you can catch that on Netflix. Uh, here's a look at seven-day forecast. We do have some cool readings for Wednesday. Highs up around 50 degrees. It looks like, uh, but sunshine returning, and then we'll find some truly warm weather moving back into the area Thursday through Friday, right through the upcoming weekend and beyond. Okay, Jamie, thank you. Learn something new every day. This is Jamie Warner. Thanks for watching our news at 6. We'll see you then. Facebook Live Night, too.